Good morning. This is View from the Pew. It is Tuesday morning, September 1st, 2020. Looking forward to some cooler weather. I know you are as well. We're in Matthew chapter 19 as we continue to look at the commands of Christ. And once more, we're going to look at a command that's more implied than explicit, which means that Jesus doesn't just come out and say, do this or don't do that. What he does is he teaches, and in the process of teaching, as, I am a, as I'm following Jesus through the book of Matthew, as I'm walking with him, I'm listening to these words of his, and I am taking them to heart, and I am seeking to obey them in my own life as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Remember, this is all about being disciples who will make disciples. That means you've got to know all that he commanded you to do. This has to do with being single and being married and divorced. Now, before I start, I want you to understand that I know that there are perfectly legitimate times when we go through situations in life and the end result is divorce. Not everyone who has been a part of a divorce is necessarily sinned through that divorce, but it is God's will, if at all possible, within the realm of reason to stay married. As a matter of fact, Jesus is going to say some very interesting things about singleness as well in this passage. I'll read the whole thing. I'm not going to reference the whole thing in my, my title, but let me read to you what he says starting in Matthew 19. As he is visiting with the Pharisees and they're talking to him about divorce. Now, part of the thinking here is that those who were the Pharisees were looking for excuses to divorce if at all possible. Understand there's something very special and sacred about marriage, and that's what Jesus addresses. Verse 3, the Pharisees also came to him, testing him and saying, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And Jesus answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? Take note of that in our world today. What did Jesus say about gender? He made them male and female. And said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Then they said to him, then why did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. His disciples said to him, if such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. Now listen to what Jesus says here. Jesus said to them, all cannot accept this saying, but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born thus from their mother's womb. And there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who is able to accept it, let him accept it. And I think by eunuch, what he means here is, is not necessarily what we think about as eunuch today. I think he's talking about the idea of one who has chosen not to marry, one who has chosen not to marry. Some people are of that disposition from birth, some choose it for religious reasons, and some are made that way by men. And it may include the physical as well. But the idea behind marriage is also the idea of being fruitful and multiplying. But his followers said, in this case, it's better not to marry. And Jesus says, if you're able, stay single. And Paul even reflected this and think it's 1 Corinthians 7. But if you're not able, get married. And if you get married, stay married. Now, I understand there are some red flags that we deal with. Abuse, adultery, sexual immorality is mentioned here. It's, it's a, it is an out clause for divorce, according to Jesus. Abuse, adultery, addiction, these are red flags that can come up when dealing with a spouse and helping a spouse or getting away from a dangerous situation. I fully understand that. But I want you to see God's plan. 
God's plan first is if you can accept it, stay single. If you can't, that's fine. No sin in that. Get married. And if you get married, be faithful. Two people becoming one. That's God's plan. So if this command has a name, let's call it this. Honor the sanctity of marriage. Honor the sanctity of marriage. Because as Paul said in Ephesians 5, you're remembering Christ in the church when you do. So let's honor the sanctity of marriage, if not for our sake, for the sake of the Savior and his church, which we're representing. So I pray God blesses you today. I pray that you'll join us tomorrow night, if at all possible, 6.15, as we finish up our study in the book of James, getting ready to go into 1 Peter the next week after that. And I hope you'll join us Sunday at 9.30 and 11 a.m. for our final week as of right now of two services. We're hoping to start Sunday school on campus on the 13th. So we invite you to come join us online and in person if possible. You just stay safe out there. Let's continue to use all the correct health measures, and let's pray for one another during this time. God bless.